Welcome to NFL King of the Hill. Let's break it down. All NFL teams will start at the base of this mountain shown here, except for one. That one team will be randomly selected to sit on the throne. This spot will be occupied by a team until they lose a game, in which the team who beats them will replace them on the throne. When the team on the throne loses a game, they won't be eliminated, instead they'll be placed at the back of the order. However, if a team loses a game attacking the throne, that said team will be eliminated. The team on the throne will always be the home team. I'm sure you've noticed there's multiple levels to this mountain. Once eight teams are eliminated, the remaining teams will be shifted up to the next level. The team which is sitting on the throne position once a move up is initiated will be awarded a power up. These three power ups might be familiar to you from Imperialism. The three selected today are Afterlife, Double Trouble, and Redeployed. I'll explain what they do once we get there. Oh, and one more thing, when a team wins a game, they get to steal a player from the losing squad. That's about the full concept, so let's see which team will hit the peak first. So the first thing up is the selected team, which will be sitting on the throne first thanks to the wheel made by joey gomez on instagram the first team to be on the throne will be the cincinnati Bengals. so as for the other 31 teams i'm just gonna throw them into a list randomizer and random.org and here's the order which these teams will be playing in i'm sure you want to read every bit of this all right think of it as a book read left to right so that means the buccaneers are the number one in order while the vikings are number 31 which means the team in the red spot the buccaneers in this instance will be playing the throne so the buccaneers will be going to cincinnati for our first game and remember if they look Lose, they are eliminated from the game, but if they win, they will take the Bengals position, and the Bengals will fall into last of the order, meaning they will be 31, and the Vikings would be shifted to 30th, and so on and so forth. So let's get started with Bengals Buccaneers. Well, it looks like Tom Brady can't wait to get home to his cat, or his sons. Oh, who am I kidding? They're the same. He kisses both on the lips anyways. Bengals will be the first team to maintain their throne for one game as they beat the Buccaneers 24-14. We're going to give Joe Burrow some protection, but if there was any dude I wouldn't mind raw dogging the NFL, it would be Joe Shiesty. We have the true test of the throne right here. It looks like the Bengals are going to get topped by the Dolphins here as Dolphins are going to win 38-24. to the Dolphins needed a quarterback who could correctly answer 2 plus 2 equals 4, so I gave Joe Burrow up to Miami. So now that you can see the Dolphins take over the throne, while well, the Bengals will fall last in order, and as the Raiders will be up next, they're in the red spot, they will play the Dolphins. Yes, I still have Derek Carr suited up in the black and silver, but let's see if he can dig himself out of the trench that he's in right now. At the two-yard line, here's a good completion. It's going to put him at the 30. Because Madden has the timekeeping of a brick, they're now down the 15 seconds, and looks like Derek Carr is going to help the team here and throw it out of bounds. Final desperation throw for Derek Carr until he goes to New Orleans. I don't know what happened there, but I can tell you right now, Derek Carr, New Orleans welcomes you with open arms as he's going to throw a pick six. Good for him. Also, what the hell was this animation? The Dolphins will drop a 50 bomb on the Las Vegas Penitentiary. And who else better to team up with Tyreek Kill other than Devontae Adams? The Rams are up next. They're going to test the Dolphins to the throne, but it looks like they're just going to fall short by eight points. You already know who I'm stealing. Only one of, if not the greatest defensive player of all time. And now it's time for the true challenge. The Chiefs are taking on the Dolphins to take over their throne. We're going to start a third down in inches. If the Chiefs can get this, they can basically just waste the timeouts of the Dolphins, which sure enough they will with Isaiah Pacheco. And now at this point, the Dolphins have no timeouts. Chiefs have 30 seconds, but you're going to see a pretty generous play here by Jarek McKinnon. He's going to fall down the one yard line, causing the Chiefs to call a timeout, which stops the clock for the Chiefs. And now what they're going to do is just run it up the middle again with 25 seconds on the clock. The Chiefs will score seven Dolphins have a chance. You already know the Dolphins are in panic mode when they have Tyree Kill. Yes, Tyree Kill and kick return duty. It's a bad kick, but look at this. He breaks one tackle, and yesterday he smoked some white boys in a 60-meter dash. Today he is smoking the Chiefs special teams unit, and he's going to tie this game. We'll be sitting to overtime. No thanks to Tyree Kill scoring a kick return touchdown against his former team. And the Chiefs, well, they're kind of boring on offense, so they're going to take up my entire time. Hit the sweet precious time of this, so I'm going to speed it up by 2,000 until something fun happens. And something fun happens right here. Third down to nine from the 19. Burrow, or not Burrow, Mahomes. Burrow's on the other side. But Mahomes is going to get a touchdown to Travis Kelsey. That's one touchdown scored in overtime. Remember, the Dolphins can get a chance to score back. And the Chiefs took all that time. Guess what? The Dolphins only need one play. It's a tale of two teams. Look at this move. And Tyree Kill again. The second time in like the last 30 seconds will go the length of the field. Tie this game in overtime and does an emote, a flip in the end zone. We're tied at 38. But unfortunately, I hate to break it to you, Tyreek Hill cannot play defense, so the Chiefs just go down the field again, they'll kick a field goal to Harrison Butker, and they'll end up winning this game 41-38 in overtime. Based on that last performance by Tyreek Hill, I think it's the Chiefs' wet dream to get him back in the team, so it's a good old family reunion for Tyreek Hill. Well, the Dolphins had a pretty good short run right there, they're going to get a lot of good players, but now the Chiefs 
have the throne. I know Patrick Mahomes' brother has some experience being on top. I wonder if it runs in the family. The Chiefs have a Mickey Mouse cakewalk schedule from here on out. They're going to play the Atlanta Falcons, and look at this. It's 28-3. Who would have thought? Next up is the Saints. Of course, they're going to be the Falcons. And Saints, Derek Carr, not. Well, let's be honest. I think we already knew who was going to win this game. But then the Cleveland Browns are up next, and they're actually giving the Chiefs a little bit of trouble. We're going to start with the first down pick up here to Travis Kelsey, but more importantly, look at Johnson right here. He's going to do a good old elementary stop, drop, and roll like he's on fire. And now it's a first down and 10 from the 39. Four-point game, but Holmes, there's a flag. going to go to Juju. He's going to baby a dude out of bounds, but this flag is going to be offensive holding. Back him up 10 yards, but it doesn't matter. Travis Kelsey, the man himself, gets those 10 yards back plus the first down. So it's first down and 10 dead at midfield, and he'll do a little hula hoop dance. Pretty cool of him. First down and 10 from midfield. Only 45 seconds left. Chiefs with two timeouts, but you don't need him because remember that one guy from the other game? Yeah, that man named Tyreek Hill. Oh yeah, he exists on the Chiefs again. And there's a second flip of the video, as well as a go-ahead touchdown. And now Deshaun Watson coming back out, man. Deshaun Watson had great after-game plans, but now Mahomes had to put it into that. He has to come back and get three on the board. If not, his massage is canceled. First down and 10 from the 28. 20 seconds left. Deshaun Watson going to get a good throw here. It's pretty good. It's going to get him to the 45. And looks like they're going to call a timeout with 11 seconds. Second down and 10. It's basically the final play from here on out. Let's just see if Deshaun Watson can force anything. And actually, ooh, Amari Cooper. Oh, he couldn't get the angle. He came down with it. But just imagine if he had the burners on that one. That could have been it. And looks like the Chiefs will beat the Browns as well. So they're going to steal three players from those three games. They get A.J. Terrell from the Falcons. And then they're going to get Marshawn Lattimore from the Saints. And then from the Browns, they're going to get, obviously, Miles Garrett. A 99 overall. All right, six teams are eliminated. If the Chiefs can get past the Chargers here, I imagine they'll get the double life power because they'd probably take care of the Colts, which means we'd have 24 teams left and we'd move up to the second level. But let's just see if the Chargers can give the Chiefs a little bit of trouble. Ooh, looks like maybe the Chiefs are going to get a little trouble from the Chargers. Never mind. The Chargers are over here playing a game of football where the Chiefs are playing with their food. They are playing a game of hot potato. Good for them. Yeah, after watching that last performance from the secondary, I think the Chiefs need someone who can pick the ball off with two hands. So here's Derwin James Jr. to the Chiefs. And now it's the Indianapolis Colts. They're the only people who stand in the way from the Chiefs from getting the afterlife power up. It's a good start. They're up 14-0. All right, Colts, come on now. Let's get some points on the board. Colts, you there? Colts? Colts, are you kidding me? What is going on here? 27 unanswered points. 33. Are they going to score a single point? 47? They just gave up 53 unanswered points. What the hell, Colts? I mean, you guys could have at least tried. Gosh. Obviously, Quentin Nelson. I know it's not even imperialism, but of course, got to start passing him around eventually. Well, eight teams have been eliminated, and we're down to 24 teams, so you know what that means. We're moving on up to the next level, which means the Chiefs will get the afterlife power-up. I'll go ahead and put this in the top corner, just so we can stay reminded. Now, essentially, like Imperialism, it's going to give the team a second life. Now, of course, you can lose, but this gives them a the second life if they're attacking the throne, meaning they won't be eliminated. All right, we've reached level two of the mountain with 24 teams left, and the Chicago Bears are about to get wiped off the hill. My deepest condolences to the Bears fans, but hey, at least you guys fleeced the living hell out of the Panthers the other day, but the Chiefs are going to knock you out 31-17. Other than like Byron Pringle or Darnell Mooney, this was the best player the Chiefs could take here. Super Bowl rematch, we're in overtime, the Chiefs are at a third down and 19, not looking too sharp, and Mahomes gets hit while he's throwing the football, they're gonna have to punt the football to the Eagles, and I don't know what happens here, but the O-lineman just starts riding on the back of Patrick Mahomes, that's how you tear an ACL right there, uh, Pat, Jalen Hurts gonna get the football back, 29-29, look at this throw, on the run to, gets it to AJ Brown, just like that, they're in field goal range, and I imagine they can score a touchdown if they really want to, as you can see, they're now at the two yard line, Jalen Hurts going to punch this one in maybe. Second down and goal. Here's the snap. He's going to flush himself out to the left. Jalen Hurts. Oh, okay, I don't really know what we're doing there. Could you guys just take the field goal maybe? I think that would be pretty smart. No, instead, we're just going to have one more chance to throw it. And there's the touchdown we're looking for. The Eagles will actually knock the Chiefs off the throne. And the Chiefs will fall to the end of the order. And the Kelsey brothers will meet up in the city of brotherly love. Well, looks like the Eagles got the revenge for the Super Bowl game. But the Chiefs, man, they won like six games right there. So they're looking pretty stacked. But the Eagles would take care of the throne right now. So now it's time to see what the Eagles do on the throne, considering that they're going to beat the Texans. They're actually going to sweep the floor with them, with their own sweat, apparently. 35-10, to 10, and they're also going to steal Laramie Tunsil. I didn't really show it that far, but it's a left tackle for the Eagles. And moving on, the Eagles will have to take on the Green Bay Packers. 
where the Green Bay Packers are already in field goal range, but the Eagles can stop them to get to a field goal instead of a touchdown. That would be more important here. And now 47 seconds left tie game. Aaron Jones takes it, glitches through his own his teammate, and he's going to run all the way to the 3-2 yard line. Okay, this game is basically over now. Where it looks like the Green Bay Packers will get a field goal. I know Mason Crosby is 79 years old, but he's managed to hit that chip shot. And of course, the Green Bay Packers win that game, and they're going to steal Travis Kelsey. I wonder how many of you guys are going to think this is rigged, considering you guys just figured I was a Packers fan last video. Don't worry, guys. The Packers won't win. Or will they? Okay, I know this is very off topic, but when I'm doing this voiceover right now, looking at my phone, the Rams just traded Jalen Ramsey to the Dolphins for a bag of chips. In other news, the Packers just beat the Titans 38-7, and they're also going to beat the Panthers 41-21. So I guess this Aaron Rodgers darkness retreat has put a little sense in his mind, and he's finally winning some football games. But next up is his, ooh, his dark, the scary rival, the 49ers. Actually, let's see how they're going to choke this one. Just need a touchdown. Rodgers dances in the pocket. Look at this. Christian Watson is open. Who needs Devontae Adams? And now it's Brock Purdy. First down and 10, 11 seconds. And I'd already know the Packers defense is going to do something despicable to throw this game. Uh, there you have it. They're going to let a receiver get as open as a Waffle House at 3 in the morning. And now they can take a field goal to tie this game at 33. And there you have it. We're going to another overtime game. All right, Packers. Let's see what's going to happen here. Brock Purdy starts with the football. It's a read action. What the heck? What are we doing? What? Okay. Brock Purdy thinks he's Justin Fields or something. You're white. Stay in the pocket. And third down and five for the Packers as Mason Crosby. It's a little longer field goal, but I think he's got it. Sure enough, he does. Packers will win this in overtime, 36-33. to 33, And now they're going to play the Cowboys. But the Cowboys are actually putting a little bit of trouble in Lambeau. 24-14 right now, and looks like the Cowboys are trying to run away with this game. Maybe the Packers make a comeback. Nope. And the Cowboys will win. But the Packers will still get some solid players out of that, including Brian Burns and the Carolina Panthers. And then they're also going to get Kevin Bird from the Titans. I know Derrick Henry is a better option, but they already have Aaron Jones. And then followed up with Nick Boza from the 49ers. But in return, they're going to lose, guess who? Travis Kelsey. He's just doing a tour around the NFL right now. He's done three out of four NFC East teams as well. Well, the Packers went on a good little streak right there, but not before the Cowboys will take over. And if you take a look at this, Cowboys win a couple games against Steelers and Cardinals, then they can move up and get the double triple power. Let's just see what happens from here. Here's everyone's granddad's favorite game, the Steelers versus the Cowboys. We'll start with George Pickens. So we'll get about six right there. We'll line back up. It's 13-14, by the way. Third down and four. Pickett looking deep. No, he's going to save the crossing. Deontay Johnson gets past midfield. And now, looks like the Steelers are driving to get a field goal, but they're going to do a pitch run. I don't know what we're doing there. That's just going to make a longer field goal, where the Steelers will take a kick to win the game with Boswell. About a 38-yard kick. This is to end it and take over the throne from the Cowboys. Yes, he's got it. Steelers will take the throne. I want you to take a big guess at who they're going to steal here. Yeah, I think you probably already got that one. Steelers on the throne, they got to take care of the Cardinals, and sure enough, they will. They're going to beat them big, 27-11. to 11. That's a weird score. Where they'll basically get a free receiver out of this, DeAndre Hopkins. Maybe a little bit of trouble coming with their next opponent. It's the New York Giants, already up 20, or 30-20. to 20. They're going to go down and score another touchdown, maybe. It's 30-23, to 23, and looks like the Giants will edge out of it by 3, winning 33-30, to 30. and... I, just, I can't I can't keep on doing this, man. Come on, someone else, please. Here's a quick update with the Giants at the throne. They beat the Jets and Ravens, and of course, they get the power-up. Continuing on. We got a throw down going down in Jersey right now. Daniel Jones is going to take off and run. He's going to slide for seven yards while taking out his spleen in the process. Second and three. Six-point game, by the way. Daniel Jones looking to deliver a dime. Sure enough, he does it. And guess who? To Travis Kelsey. Everyone's favorite former Steeler, former Packer, former Eagle, former Chief, former... And Daniel Jones and some pressure and... Oh my goodness, come on! You're at the 12-yard line. What are you doing? Oh, he, he threw a pick six, didn't he, too? Let's go to the house. Yeah, this game is over. Guys, you would never believe who the Jets just stole from the Giants. Ravens challenging the throne now that the Jets have the throne. And I wouldn't say the Jets even had the throne at all because they just got destroyed. So now the Ravens are on the throne and they're going to get Quinn and Williams. They actually don't need Travis Kelsey. The streak is over. They already have Mark Andrews. Thank the Lord. This is a pretty big matchup. If the Ravens win here and hold on, they get the double triple power up. It'd be 16 teams left. The Bills got a first down here. They're going to be at 43-yard line with a minute. Josh Allen, 
Looking up the middle of the field. He's got it. No, what a play by Roquan Smith. He just babies Dawson Knox and he's left paralyzed on the ground. Third down and seven. Allen going towards Gabe Davis. He has him to the 40. And I think this is where they're going to have to kick the field goal. Sure enough, it's going to be like a 48-yard kick. Can Tyler Bass beat the Ravens? Uh, no, it's off. The Ravens will hold on and win 23-21. to And the Ravens will get to add Stephon Diggs as well as the Double Trouble power-up. So now the Baltimore Ravens, you can take a look at this. Eight teams have been eliminated right here. And the Baltimore Ravens are moving the league up to the level three and getting the double trouble power. I'm sure you know how this works if you watch Imperialism, but basically for every team they beat, they get to steal two players instead of one from here on out in the rest of the video. So here's an updated look at the mountain with 16 teams. The Ravens will take on the Commanders. And just like Imperialism standards, the Ravens are going to sweep the floor. The Ravens, like always, they're going to win 35 to 14. And they're going to steal two players, of course, one of them being Terry McLaurin, a star wide receiver to go along with Stephon Diggs. And also, they're going to add Jonathan Allen, an X-Factor defensive tackle. Next game is the Jaguars, but the Ravens are in some trouble. Looks like they're going to lose their throne here, which isn't a horrible thing. They'll just be placed in the back of the order, but you never know. Maybe they can come out a win, unless defensive Trevor Lawrence picks them off. Okay. And Jaguars will be taking the star receiver from the Baltimore Ravens being Stephon Diggs. At least they still have Terry McLaurin. And the Jags for the Patriots, they're going to absolutely dismantle them. They're going to win 42-24. to Followed up by another unrealistic win. The day I die is the day that I will see the Jaguars win 59-13 to over the Detroit Lions. I don't believe I've shown who they stole from the Patriots. They stole Matthew Judon, but they're going to steal Among Us St. Brown from the Lions. It looks like the Jaguars fun ends there because here comes noontime Kirk Cousins. He beats the Jags 34-16. to And who doesn't love a good old class? family reunion. We've seen it once with Tyreek Hill. Welcome back to the Vikings, Stefan Diggs. Well, there's been a couple of changes since we last saw the mountain. Now the Vikings are on the throne, and you can see we've made it through the entire order of the teams. We are back to the Bengals. Bengals will be playing the Vikings, and four teams have been eliminated already. Bengals are back, but kind of unfortunate because they don't have Joe Burrow, so they're going to lose 27-10. to And you just know I had to do it. The LSU boys are back together. Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson. Speaking of Joe Burrow, he's playing with a different franchise now. As you guys remember from the beginning of this video, he became a Miami Dolphin, and here he is right here, down by one to the Minnesota Vikings. He's going to burn all the Minnesota Vikings timeout, but he's going to take this stupid sack right here. It's almost like he has inclusions with the Mafia, like he has some money put on his soul right now because this is going to back the field goal up to around a 45-yard kick, an even tougher kick to win the game. But of course, you can watch this ball as it hits the end zone before it even comes anywhere close to the white or the yellow. So they're going to steal Aaron Donald. I bet you forgot they even got him in the first place. Now the Vikings are down by one point to the Chiefs. They could get a pretty good steal here if they end up winning the game. You can see the sun is out, so that means it's probably noon time. So I would not be surprised if Kirk Cousins can pull it out during noon. This is a catch to Stephon Diggs. I forgot to change his number, so it's 88. One point game with one minute. Look at this pass by Kirk Cousins. Floated up. Justin Jefferson breaks free, and it's a touchdown. And he hits the gritty. Okay. Now the Chiefs get the ball back. Patrick Mahomes, quick pass. This is the first down pickup. I lied. It's on the ground. It's a fumble. Picked up back to the Vikings. And this is going to be a scoop and score, isn't it? Well, okay. Patrick Mahomes, welcome to the Minnesota Vikings. Sure enough, and I'm sure the rest of the teams are probably wetting their pants right now. All right, so the Chiefs did have the afterlife power-up. So like I said, they'll go to the back of the order. And we'll continue from here. Two more teams will be eliminated. And we'll move up to the final level of the mountain. Vikings take on the Eagles. Patrick Mahomes, once again... Eagles kryptonite apparently. He wins 38-31 of the Vikings, and then he's going to beat the Green Bay Packers. This is going to become really unfair. The Minnesota Vikings are completely stacked. They're going to add Lane Johnson from the Eagles, a right tackle 95 overall. And from the Packers, they'll get a 95 overall cornerback being Jair Alexander. And with the Eagles and Packers now being eliminated, we are down to eight teams, meaning the Vikings are on the throne as we move up to the final level of the mountain. Now this redeployed power-up isn't really a power-up. I'll explain it in a second. What the redeployed power-up is going to do here is it's going to take the remaining seven teams which are not in the throne and it's going to reshuffle their order that they're going to play the throne. So here you can see I have a list of the seven other teams which are not on the throne. This could be a bad or a good thing for the Vikings. We're just going to go ahead and randomize them again and this is our new order that they're going to play in versus the throne. So it's going to go from looking like this to looking like this. Now the Chiefs will have to play first. So our final eight teams, let's see which one will be crowned the King of the Hill. Looks like these two teams are matched up again, but here is Chad Henney. Keep in mind that it's Chad Henney. Hopefully he does great things. 
I lied. He's actually doing horrible things. This is going to be pick six, isn't it? I think that's Jair Alexander as well. Uh, go figure. They're going to get Miles Garrett and 99 overall defender from the Chiefs. They are looking stacked. But here I am thinking the Vikings were unbeatable unless Daniel Dimes chokes this. Okay, it's second down and goal. He lost like 10 yards right there. And he's led him to a fourth down and goal. Gotta look for the end zone here. Danny Dimes throws an interception, but there's a flag. Patrick Peterson comes down with it. He won't go down the end zone. He'll go down around the 8-yard line. What is the penalty marker, though? It's gonna be pass interference. Oh, the Giants are given another chance. Come on, you cannot choke this. You had so many chances. If you didn't take that sack, we wouldn't be here right now. Come on. One single yard. That's all you need. Flushed out. Are you kidding me? He throws a pick. Are you, are you Russell Wilson? What are you doing there? The Vikings win. They're going to steal Dexter Lawrence. They don't really need Saquon Barkley. So this is a solid pickup. And I just thought the Vikings were unbeatable. But no, apparently Dak Prescott and the Cowboys can do it. Uh, I don't have anything to say after that. And they're going to steal Miles Garrett. He's going to get tossed around like Travis Kelsey now. Yes, I know a lot did just happen. But we have two teams eliminated being the Chiefs and Giants. And we are down to six. And the Jaguars will be playing at Dallas. All right, we've been to overtime with these two teams, Cowboys and Jaguars. We're going to start with a completion here to Tony Pollard. He'll get about seven yards. And then up before we get another touchdown to Dalton Schultz. So that's going to put the Giants up seven. And the Jaguars get a chance. Usually when Taylor Swift is at AT&T Stadium, she's usually performing on a stage not not throwing a football and yeah we should probably go back to our singing career Taylor Swift that's going to be a turnover in overtime that's going to end it and the Cowboys will win and steal a player from the Jaguars and but they're also going to be the Jets so they're going to still play the Jets so that means the Jaguars and Jets are both eliminated and the next team up is the Steelers who the Cowboys will also eliminate the Steelers so that's three teams in a row they eliminated and we are down to three teams just like that but the three players are going to steal from those teams Justin Simmons stole him from the Jaguars, and then the Cowboys are going to steal Travis Kelsey once again, and finally TJ Watt from the Steelers. The Cowboys took care of business against those three teams, and we are down to three teams left. Cowboys, Ravens, and Vikings. The Ravens can hold on here. It's a third down and goal stand. The Ravens would take the throne over the Dallas Cowboys. It wouldn't eliminate the Cowboys the Ravens to take the throne and look at this Travis Kelsey cannot come down on third down and it's going to be a fourth down and goal can the Ravens take the throne Dak Prescott oh it's out of bounds nope incomplete Ravens take over and they'll steal two players including Miles Garrett a huge player to steal a 99 overall and Micah Parsons 96 overall right outside linebacker now the Vikings are up next if the Vikings lose they are limited let's see if the Ravens can do just that they are close to field goal range and they have the best kicker in the league just looks like they're trying to march down the timeouts the Vikings have and they're going to take the kick five seconds just to eliminate the Vikings who I thought were unbeatable. The Ravens get it done. Vikings are eliminated and Justin Tucker is him. We send it down the two teams and the Ravens will get Aaron Donald and they're also going to get Stephon Diggs back from a while back. And then there were two, the Ravens and the Cowboys. Now the Ravens can end this here and become the king of the hill if they just beat the Cowboys right here, right now. But if the Cowboys win two in a row, meaning they knock him off the throne, and then beat him when they challenge the throne, they can become the kings. Let's just see what happens here. Ravens are an 88 overall. Cowboys are an 85 overall. And some of the stars in both teams are the Ravens. Miles Garrett, Aaron Donald, Stephon Diggs. Cowboys have Travis Kelsey, TJ Watt. More I can name, just don't know them off the top of my head. But let's get going our final game more than likely, or maybe two. Ravens Cowboys. It's the final game. It's looking like a very anticlimactic finish for this video, but the Ravens just seem to be doing really good. They're just driving in on teams, and with two minutes left, they're just going to try to burn down the Cowboys' timeouts. If they can get this, it's probably over, and they got more than they need. J.K. Dobbins inside the 10, and all that's left is for the Ravens to control their destiny with a Justin Tucker kick. This is the crown, the Ravens, as the official kings of the hill. They have done it. They win 12 to 10 of the Dallas Cowboys. So there it is, set in stone. The first team to reach the top at the peak is the Baltimore Ravens. Let this just be an advertisement to the league that Lamar Jackson is in fact him. And I guess this is also just kind of make up for all the imperialism times when I screwed him over. But here it is, the Baltimore Ravens on the top. Well, there it is. Hopefully you guys like this concept. I thought it was pretty cool. If you want me to do it again, let me know what I should do different, what should say this name, all that. But thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time.